want you all to remember when you got your first driver's license. For me, I was exactly 16 years old. My dad drove me to the DMV in Bozeman, Montana, and I was so excited to get my driver's license. Y'all, that first photo on my driver's license had me grinning from ear to ear. Biggest smile I've ever had. For me, that license represented autonomy, independence, the future. For my parents, it represented a lot of sleepless nights. They were worried sick, and they had every right to be. I was a deplorable driver. The third night after I got my license was my first time to drive alone. And I borrowed my dad's truck, and I backed down the driveway, and I ran over my parents' mailbox. <laughs> and I didn't just hit it, I flattened it. Y'all, I think it's a pretty bad omen when you're 45 seconds into driving and you're already having your first crash. My parents knew that there's a lot of challenges that come with driving. On the outside of the vehicle in Montana, you're dealing with snowstorms, deer that jump in front of the vehicle, and on the inside, there are plenty of distractions. I always had my radio up loud. I think I played a lot of Journey and REO Speedwagon. Uh, chugging Diet Coke and hanging out with my bestie, Jempa. In the front seat, we jabber away while we're cruising around town. So why in the world would my parents hand the keys to a 4,000-pound automobile to a 16-year-old? One word, mobility. They needed me to stop using them as my chauffeur and to be able to get myself where I needed to go. Fast forward to today, and mobility is at the heart of all of my work. I've spent 10 years working in autonomous cars, or essentially, I work on teams who are programming cars to drive themselves. And this is me at one of my previous jobs. Don't worry, my driving's gotten a lot better since the days of flattening my parents' mailbox. But at the heart of dry, training a car to drive itself are the same challenges that my parents were worried about. How do you deal with weather? How do you deal with animals that are coming on the road? And how do you deal with all of those bad drivers that are around you? Now, y'all, a self-driving car would totally have saved my parents' mailbox. That was 100% driver error. And there are lots of things that humans do to be a horrible driver, whether it's yelling at your friends in the back seat, or texting while you're driving, or falling asleep while you're screaming down the freeway. Self-driving cars don't have those problems. They're never drunk. They're never distracted. They're never tired so they can take the human error out of the driving problem and make the road safer and make a mobility solution that's great for everybody. But the real challenge with self-driving cars is that you have to train them to handle the unknown, things that you never even think of that could happen on a public road. For example, what should it do if it comes across a naked man running down I-35 in Texas? That really happened. Or what should it do when it turns the corner in a neighborhood in California, and there's a woman in the middle of the road in a wheelchair with a broom chasing a duck? That happened. <laughs> so there's all of these challenges in how you deal with the unpredictable and teaching a car to handle things that you've never even imagined on the roads. But what if it didn't have to be that hard? What if cars could talk to each other and share information back and forth about what they're seeing and encountering? What if the road infrastructure could actually tell you that there's a hazard up ahead and how to navigate around that or to slow down because there's black ice in the lane that you're gonna encounter in half a mile? What if driving, which today is basically an individual sport where every driver and vehicle is in it for themselves to figure it out on their own, could instead be a team sport 
where you share data and information so that vehicles and drivers can make safer decisions and make them faster and better than ever before. That idea and those what ifs is how Cavenu was born. Cavenu is working to simplify driving by building technology that connects to vehicles on the road so that they can make better decisions. They can make your ride safer. They can make your driving more efficient and thus reduce greenhouse gases. They can make your ride more comfortable, your commute more reliable, and they can enable self-driving cars to ship at scale faster. That's the world that my co-founder Tyler and I are building, and we're doing a lot of that work right here in Detroit. I believe mobility is a fundamental human right. We talk about it being food, water, and shelter, and we need to add mobility to that list. And the pandemic really reminded me of how important it is to be able to get in your car and go see people in 3D, to go see grandma, to go out, out and hang with your friends. That's where the joy of life comes from. And mobility is what gives us that joy. It also gives us the basics, like getting to the grocery store to buy food, getting to school to improve your education, getting to work to make a living. We need mobility, and we need to make it something that everybody has access to. This isn't a new idea. This is an ad from 1954, where General Electric and Gas Company believed in a vision where people could get in a car and sit around a card table and play what looks like Scrabble. And the vehicle is connected to the road infrastructure and the vehicle's figuring out with the, in partnership with the infrastructure how to get you from point A to point B. And while this seemed completely visionary in, at the time, and it was, I'm here to tell you today all of those pieces are coming together and the technology is right around the corner, which is so great. And time is of the essence. We must give mobility to everyone. My husband, Steve, and I have two sweet little boys. Our oldest, Max, is five years from turning 16. And Lord help us, that child should not get a driver's license. <laughs> and the CDC agrees. The CDC just published results that said that people aged 16 to 25, the number one cause of fatalities, teenage driving. So y'all, believe me when I tell you I'm on a mission to make it so that you don't need a driver's license to have great access to mobility, so that my son never needs that, that license. <laughs> right? These are my parents. My dad has Parkinson's disease, which is a terrible disease. And he's close to losing his ability to drive. And when you live in rural Montana, you don't have access to public transportation. There isn't any. And you can't just call an Uber or a Lyft. So my mission to bring mobility to everybody, y'all, I mean it all the way out to rural Montana. Like, everybody needs to be able to get where they want to go. And I'm so excited to tell you that that vision is coming true. At Cavenu, our first project is scheduled to open in 2024, where we start building the future of roads and enabling transportation and self-driving for everybody. So thank you.